feel Irish cooking. Join me today on this live video here in Cork, Ireland, and we're gonna have some traditional Irish cooking, some classic seafood stew, some brown bread with some butter, and some Murphy's, which is a local stout. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from and welcome to this live video. I'll tell everyone where I'm at towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I haven't done the proper food video, but I passed by this restaurant, so I'll let everyone know the name of the restaurant towards the end of this video. I passed by it and I was absolutely blown away by it, just looking from the outside and looking at the menu, and then I had to uh, feature it. So uh, this is maybe the second restaurant I feature in uh, these live videos. So join me for some uh, food. Now they are completely booked inside. So I couldn't sit inside. I did not make a reservation. Did not expect that we'd need a reservation here in Ireland because a lot of places usually are not so full. It's not like a place like Italy, but this place was. So I had to sit outside, but luckily there's a gigantic heater right on top of me. Uh, so it's keeping me very, very warm. But we are eating right now a good seafood stew and some brown bread, which I'm super hyped up for. So let me show you. Let me take the seafood stew will go cold quick. So let's bite into it right immediately. All right. Look at that. Mm. Delicious. Thank you. Ooh. It's piping hot, which is great because that me gives me enough time to butter this brown bread. But wow. So this is a seafood chowder, similar that you would find in the US, but has a kind of a different taste to it. Uh, I think they're using that good Irish butter, but also it has no shellfish. So it's a shellfishless seafood chowder. <laughs> And um, mm, it's so delicious. Nice, nice, good chunks of fish. A nice variety of different fishes, which is very cool. I think I noticed some salmon in there. Oh, it's so delicious. Mm. Irish butter really does make the difference. So having that butter in the chowder, ooh. It just feels so homey. That's the thing I love about Irish cooking. It feels like a warm hug on a cold winter night. And here's some Murphy's. So Murphy's is a lot here, at least in Cork, uh, as opposed to in Dublin where it's a lot of Guinness. And I think this is the local stout. Let's try it out. Oh, this is really good. You know, I've had Murphy's before in uh, New York City, and it's really not that good. But for some reason, this is actually way, way better here. Uh, so I'm kind of blown away by how good it is. Oh, that's so delicious. All right, let's butter this bread. And Lorraine, thank you so much for 100 stars. Hail Hans, thank you so much for tuning in. You're making me hungry. No clams, no shellfish. No, this is a shellfishless seafood chowder. Try saying that 10 times over. Oh. David, enjoy your dinner and your Murphy's. You're coming to Scotland, <laughs> says David. And where's Murphy's from? Do let me know. Uh, have you visited Cove? Not yet, not yet. I might be going, stay tuned. Might be going uh, Monday or Tuesday, stay tuned. Piping hot, oh yes, it's piping hot. Hello, Anne-Marie, nice to see you here. Looks like the temperatures are quite cold here. Yes, it's very cold here in Ireland. Definitely colder than it would be in October in New York. And hello, Helen, hello, Janice, hello, Eric, hello, Apila, hello, everyone, nice to see you here. Let's butter this bread, shall we? Let's do it. Okay, how's it going? <laughs> All right. Christine, thank you so much for 100 stars. I appreciate you. Thank you. Zito says, oh, that's different. I haven't tried a good seafood dish, and I I had a bad experience with shellfish already twice. So I'm so glad to find a shellfishless 
seafood chowder. So that's why I'm having it. I'm in Nesh, yes, I'm in Cork. So we're having some butter. Let's try this out. Butter this brown bread. Ooh, look how soft. There's a little bit of chowder on my brown bread, but ooh, look how soft this is. Oh my God. I'm so hyped. And the, wait the waitress even told me, hey, you want more butter? Because I think a lot of people here really put more butter on that bread. And hello, Kay, nice to see you here. Look at that. Mm. Make sure you put loads of butter on that bread. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, were, they immediately offered me more butter, um, which I did not accept yet, but I can always ask for more butter, but let's try it out. That's an excellent brown, that's an excellent brown bread. Super soft. Again, almost tastes like a cake. That's what I love about the breads here in Ireland. They have this kind of cake quality to it. And um, almost tastes like a more kind of savory version of banana bread. That's how I associate it with. And the, it's very crusty, this one. Very crusty. Some brown breads here are not so crusty. This one has a lot of crust or a very thick crust. But the inside is super, super soft and doughy. Mm. <coughs> oh, wow. So the seafood chowder is divine. It's a big kind of grainy, the the mixture maybe they put some flour or something like that to thicken it so it has that kind of grainy texture to it and super buttery and just the pieces of salmon is just so soft so tender oh that's so delicious so uh mira says look at you ariel enjoy your meal i'm hungry for this bread and butter oh yeah evangeli says I love hot food. I'm so glad you do. Colleen, nice to see you here. Is it hearty? Oh yeah, very hearty. This is what I was missing when I was in Italy. Italy did have some great food. It had amazing food, but I was missing the heartiness of a good chowder. And it's different from um, American chowder because the New England chowder that you might get is made with cream. Luckily, no cream here is involved, which is nice. It doesn't taste like creamy or milky. It tastes buttery. But what's more important is to dip this bread and let it melt the butter into the bread. Try this out. More butter, please. Yeah, thank you. Alright, let's try this out. Oh my god. Oh wow, that's a buttery explosion right there. Mm. Thank you. Oh yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's a buttery explosion right there. Oh, wow. Mm. 
You know French onion soup has a lot of big chunks of bread. I think the Irish should consider doing that with their soups. Just put a bunch of brown bread in your soup. <laughs> because it's a really good combination. Mm. So it seems like a ratatouille moment with that. Taste bud explosion says, Anne Marie, you know, I somewhat grew up with this type of food, so I have a little bit of experience with the food, and um, it does feel a little bit homey. The thing is, the style here is so different from my kind of grew up with in New York. New York, we do have seafood chowder, something I grew up with ever since little, going out to Long Island, going to Port Jefferson, having some good seafood chowder. Uh, brown bread, different type of brown bread, but it's so, it's similar, but very different. And it's not like Italian food, where Italian food, it's a hundred years removed, but somehow the similarities between Irish cuisine and New England cuisine are a lot closer than Italian American and Italian. And so this is almost like my childhood flavors. Almost. Zero says, you describe it so well. I know what you mean. I'm glad you, you know what I mean, yeah. George says, and for dessert is deep fried butter. How did you guess, George? Deep fried butter with a bunch of sugar on it. Yeah, sprinkled with a little bit of Bailey's. I got one butter, two butters. And hello, Lorraine. How's it, how's it going, Lorraine? Hope all is well. Three butters and four butters. How many should I put on this brown bread? Let me know. How many? Vote now. <laughs> Wendy says, please, more butter. Great way to go. <laughs> when in Ireland, do as the Irish do. Slather all that butter on that bread. Um, hello, Susie. Nice to see you here. Thank you for tuning in from New York. Uh, you're making me feel uh, with that clam chowder. Yeah, clam chowder is something you'll find in New York, which is awesome. Tina, I remember as a child having bread and butter with load of sugar on top. Where, where, where is that from, Tina? I see your last name is Murphy. Was that an uh, Irish American thing? Or are you from Ireland? Do remind me. Try two of them. A lot of people vote two. All four, says Colleen. All right, I'll do my best with all four. Let's do it. Cloud says two. All right, we'll see how two looks, and then we'll work from there. He says, I'm gonna miss that butter glow. Oh no, when I come to New York. All right, we're just gonna put this on top. There we go. You know, we don't even need to spread the butter. We can just put it on top. This one, I left it close to the to the chowder, so it's nice and melted already. Look at that. Look at that, nice and melted. People are saying, let's ask Kay for the amount of butter that is required for this meal. <laughs> I think it might need one more. Yeah, one more. Let's not let's not indulge too much. We're not going through a famine, luckily. But we need one more. <laughs> Spread it all good, says uh, Wendy. Oh yeah, my hands are getting all buttery. Got butterfingers because of all this butter. 
<laughs> I'm doing this as I have the camera between me and the butter, so bear with me for the awkward hand movements. It's a work in progress to master the art of spreading butter on camera when I'm filming it myself. There we go. Gotta get it to the edges. All right, let's do this. Susie says, wow, that's a lot of butter. butter. Oh yes, three butters on this bread. Can I taste the bread? You know, Irish bread is so thick. That's a great question. Who oh, asked that? Um, Putas. That's a great question. Irish bread is so thick that yes, I can still taste the bread, but it tastes like almost like a cream on top of the bread. You know, you ever had like a good scone with a uh, clotted cream? That's how that tastes like. Oh, it's so good. the udders of the cow. I can feel the hands of the Irishman who's milking that cow. That's how vivid the taste is of this butter. He's wearing his Aaron sweater while he's milking that cow. That's exactly exactly the full flavor I end up getting. Some drunk people. I'll wait till it passes. Can you feel your arteries start to furl up? I can, Gary. I can. Oh yeah. I feel the clogging of my arteries already. Lisa says he's just eating butter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why would you go to Ireland? Why would you eat anything else? I still have another uh, course here left. Pat, Pat and everyone else asking me questions about if I'm going this or there, that place. I truly understand why you asked. Uh, um, it's awesome that you enjoy the show so much, but I'm moving forward with a policy where I really don't talk about where I go to next. So just stay tuned. <laughs> uh, Susie says, it's bread with butter, as Kay says. Indeed it is. It's a uh, three butter on the bread and one for the soup and chowder. I don't think the soup and chowder needs more butter. I'm already feeling full with this, but we still have two more courses left because I gotta show you the full experience. Sinead. Hey Sinead, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you say, I'm gonna get hooked on Irish butter. Luckily, the US has access to it. But just like the beer, 
just like the beer that doesn't taste as good in the US like the Guinness is not as good in the US in my opinion something special about it drinking it here I think it's because of the freshness same thing with the butter I, I don't think the butter the Irish butter that you get in Whole Foods it's good it's probably one of the better butters that you can buy in Whole Foods or some supermarkets in New York. But something about it having it here tastes even better. Pat says, Kerry Gold is your best bet. It is indeed. So feel free to ask me any questions as I'm eating, and we're gonna wait till the next course. Uh, oh my god, lay on the butter for me, says the Yes, yes. Butter with bread. Is that an appetizer? It is. Putis, yeah, it is. Tina says, vacuum pack a few pounds of butter. I will. That was delicious. You never put uh, better butter on your knife, says NW. You know, I grew up eating butter on my um, bread. That was amazing. Racy food chowder. Yeah. And the brown butter. Yeah. Do you need a steak knife for your main? What? Do you need a steak knife for your main? Yes, that'll be great, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Pat says, how do you stay so thin? You eat a lot. Well, in every single country, I adopt the a local food that helps with staying in great shape. In New York, it's donuts. It's very good for uh, hearty health. And uh, I end up staying thin on a good diet of donuts every day. In Italy, it was mostly uh, eating Roman pizza and also a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of cheese too. And then um, <laughs> here, the key to a good diet is a lot of butter. Just like put butter on everything. Put butter on the beer, put butter on the bread, put butter on the soup, put butter on the pork, put butter on the sausage roll that already is made with butter, put butter on that croissant, put butter on that scone, put butter on everything. <laughs> Jenna says it's sarcasm time. <laughs> but in all honesty, I, I, I walk a lot, yeah. I walk a lot. Um, yes, plus, uh, Susie says, yeah, sure, plus walking 10 miles a day. Yeah, I, well, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a little, little part. <laughs> uh, Chestnut, uh, hey, Kurihara, nice to see you here. Hope all is well in Japan. I can't wait to go to Japan. Hope it opens up next year. Kurihara says, your, your jaw is sharper than ever. <laughs> it's all that butter. Just uh, slather on my jaw. There we go. <laughs> um, Zap says, Thank you so much, Kuriana. I appreciate the compliment. Pat says, Oh my, 30 minutes? Where are you referring to, Pat? Uh, what is the temperature? Cold. That's what the temperature is. I think it's about like 52 degrees Fahrenheit. And I was very amused uh, as to what was happening in the table in front. Wendy says I need butter. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'll make you a live video. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bob says butter makes your pants fall off. <laughs> Indeed it does. Oh, we just nice to see you here. Yeah, it looks very cold. I have like this very good heating in this beautiful restaurant, but 
but yeah, it's cold in general. Pat says it's chilly in Ireland. If someone asks a question before, feel free to ask. Do you find the cork accent hard to listen to? I don't. I don't. A lot. A lot of people here are very young. This is probably one of the youngest cities I've ever been to. Period. I I'm stunned by how young the city is. I went on a bus tour earlier today, which you saw two live videos, and I'm gonna post the extra video soon about the uh, Mizzen Head, which is the edge of Europe. This bus tour had maybe 15 people, a little bit more. I had about 20 people. The, for the first time in my life, I was the oldest person in a tour. It blew my mind. I was literally the oldest person there. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> How young this city is, both in tourism and also the locals and the restaurants and everything. This is a super young city. I have barely seen people above the age of 45 here. Don't forget to put extra butter in your pocket, says uh, George. Yeah, indeed. Do you prefer Dublin or Cork, says Sabi. I don't have enough experience with Cork um, yet, but I'm already having the feeling that the the food is good. I can't listen to you. Uh, I can't listen thinking about you and butter, says Wendy. <laughs> Oldest person in Wales is Beverly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I was shocked. I was shocked. This is the first time in my life I've experienced that uh, on travel. Because usually in bus tours, the demographic for most bus tours tends to be generally 45 plus even older uh, 55 plus is generally the case with most tours and even when traveling to certain countries uh, people tend to be uh, older hey you read that oh my uh, maybe you got on a school bus it wasn't a school bus but I think it was a lot of college kids Can't wait to make Irish stew when it's cold enough down here in Georgia. Oh, you make some Irish stew in Georgia. That's awesome. That's really cool to hear, Jimmy. And Ireland is the safest place, easiest place to travel around. It is. It is. Are you finding police uh, policemen are looking around for you? No. <laughs> Gary, no. Don't worry. I am no longer in Northern Ireland. <laughs> We're we're now we're now in the Republic. <laughs> it's a lot calmer here when it comes to police officers. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect, thank you. I think she mentioned there's something else on the show, but look at this. Oh my god. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Luckily, I'm hungry. People here are really well fed, and if just think about this before I show you the food. Think about this. We're walking around many of these beautiful cities in Ireland, in small towns. Have you noticed that people tend to be pretty good shape? Definitely thinner than most Americans. And yet they're eating this much. Or is it only me? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. Irish urbanists out there. Am, am I am I the one eating a lot, or uh, is this a, like a usual serving? Look at that! Wow. So here we have slow cooked pork with the uh, applesauce, some type of kind of stuffing, uh, some type of other type of sauce that's drizzled on the slow cooked pork. I think it's made out of some type of uh, fruit, and we have some roasted potatoes. We have some mash. Oh my god, some cheesy mash. 
Look at that, and oh, I'm so excited for this. Some good carrots and some, uh, George asked, did I get the senior discount? Since uh, this is such a young city. You know, this is one of the few places in all of Cork that I've seen people who are uh, older than the age of 35. <laughs> so I'm pretty young here. <laughs> but other other restaurants are like, like 18 to 21 in other restaurants. All right, I'm so excited for this. This is a whole lot of food. It's called Potato Gratin. Thank you so much. Shanae, I appreciate you. Mmm, down for carrots and beans. Oh, I love roasted carrots. Oh, it's my favorite. I'm so glad this is the country where they have so many carrots. Because I love it. S similar to U.S. cuisine. Or Northeast cuisine. Alright, let's cut into this. It's not too fattening, says Rosalind. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's not like uh, American cuisine that can sometimes be drizzled in oil. Oh, wow. Look how this falls apart. It's almost like a pulled pork. It is a pulled pork, except they didn't pull it. But yeah, slow cooked for, I think, uh, 10 hours, 14 hours? 10 to 14 hours was what the menu said. So it's basically pulled pork. It just, they just didn't shred it. Ooh, and so fragrant, the smell, wow. I love the potato gratin uh, below and this applesauce. Oh, this is gonna be a good combination. So let's go and try this first on its own. Joe says this is like pernil. So pernil usually is cooked a little bit less, but yeah, it might be similar, a little bit similar to pernil, which is Puerto Rican roast pork. Hey, Pat says, tummy is a good slow cook, good slow cooking for me. Oh yeah, let's try this out. Oh my God. This is literally as good as some of the best barbecue places I've tried in, in the U.S. Who would have thought I would have found good pulled pork in Ireland? This is literally the same taste as pulled pork. The sauce on top is like a barbecue sauce. Uh, the gratin tastes similar to like a good stuffing or a good like um, the, the topping. That and the pork is super, super tender. They cook this really slow. They're not BSing. Some places BS when they say slow cooked, but no, here they are not BSing. So let's try it out with a little bit of the applesauce right here. And let's go all the way to have a roasted potato. This meal feels like me cozying up with a few woolen blankets as a fire burns at the fireplace right in the middle of a living room in a little Irish cottage right by the seaside. You smell burning peat. That's exactly how it tastes like. Exactly. Wow. Anonymous Sue says it's like good hugga. Yeah, it's, it's edible hugga. Hugga, for people who don't know, is the Danish concept of cozy living. 
So it's edible hugga, ladies and gentlemen. Edible coziness. This is what that is. The barbecue sauce that they made has some type of fruit in it. It's, it's sweet. Or it might have some molasses or some honey. But it's definitely a little bit sweet. Not sugar sweet, sugary sweet. It's like kind of a little bit fruitier sweetness. Wow, that's a good barbecue sauce. It's a little bit spicy too. Nina says such a poetic description. Yeah. Nina says, uh, 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 Ronald says it's a food telenovela. Yes, Ronald. Por que, Maria? Por que este puerco es tan bueno, Maria? <laughs> Por que? <laughs> Why? <laughs> These potatoes are almost like a mac and cheese. Sometimes uh, you see this in the U.S. Well, usually we mix cheese with everything. So, yeah, you see this usually in the U.S., but the way they cook this is almost like a good mac and cheese. It's a really good mac and cheese. I'm not sure what type of cheese that they use. It's different from a cheddar. And it's not so super greasy as a kind of a bechamel or creamy like a bechamel or something like that. It's good hearty. This almost feels almost like a Thanksgiving meal as well. Like if you were going to a Thanksgiving meal down south in the US, this is what they would serve you. Mm. As Fields asks, is it late to have dinner here? I think so. I. I started walking here around 8 p.m. I already saw people stumbling drunk, coming out of bars and heading home via taxi. Like I saw that a few times walking around. Uh, so I can tell people here party and eat pretty early. So yeah, I think it's pretty late. I think uh, the restaurant is emptying out by this time. Anything with cheese wins. That's one great dinner. Yeah, Pat. It is bad. It definitely is. All right, let's try these carrots. Mm. Oh wow! They really drizzled this in a whole lot of rosemary. It has a very strong rosemary taste to it. The carrots are super, super tender in that kind of vegetable way. So super soft. Very creamy. And I like how big the carrots are because sometimes in the US they serve baby carrots, which are nowhere near as flavorful as a good, huge carrot. Tony says, leave room for pudding. Well, I'll do my best. I didn't know this plate was gonna be so big. Oitra says, Cork is a port city, so maybe a lot of sailors. I think traditionally, yes, Oitra's, but I don't think anymore. Uh, no, they weren't sailors, the people were stumbling. It was, I saw a lot of women stumbling out, <laughs> drunk. 9.25 there, glad they're still open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, many restaurants start, stop seating people around 9 p.m. to 9, 9, uh, 9.30. Hmm. Lorraine says, just so everyone knows, I'm a comedian. I make comments and I hope they're funny. <laughs> I'm glad Lorraine on, the, on YT. We have a few Lorraines tuning in. Drunk in Ireland, who a thunk, says Nina. Well, I, I don't mean to stereotype. Um, I'm just, it's not, it's not about the stereotype. I'm just noting that uh, people here are, are, it's a much earlier culture than hanging out late at night as opposed to New York. Because in New York you see that. Um, London you see that. Italy you didn't see too many drunk people, but um, 
you see that in other cities. It's not it's not about the culture itself. It's about how early people kind of hang out. And that's why I noticed being around. Mm. Delicious. What is this called? This is potato gratin. So it's sliced potatoes, cream, a little bit of cheese, and some garlic. Oh, that's really good. It almost tastes like a, uh, American mac and cheese. I, I, keep, I don't need to do mac and cheese because I love mac and cheese. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's in the cards, but everyone loves the gratin. And if you want extra, just let me know. Oh, you, like, why is it not in the cards, if I may ask? I don't know. I don't yeah. think it's a real Irish people thing. Like, I make it at yeah. home with my brothers, yeah. but it's. We get the, the croquetti ones, you know, it's like mac and cheese, but it's deep fried. They oh, put it yeah. in the oven, it's like, I love that. <laughs> They're not exactly calorie friendly. Right. Oh, so you guys like, are sticking to traditional Irish? It's mostly traditional Irish, yeah. like the Strasbourg Boost is obviously not Irish. Yeah, but right. They have kind of mostly Irish. The fish tends to be really Irish based. Oh, and yeah. And then kind of the goose is kind of would have been very traditional Irish Christmas dinner years back. Yeah, I wish it's more mainland Europe, like it's very big in Germany, okay. it's kind of Strasbourg obviously. Kind of that area, they still have the goose as kind of a really prominent thing, whereas nobody even spots it on the menu over here. Yeah. They just think it's chicken. But if you get a chance to try it, it's really lovely. Is there anywhere I can try goose? We goose here. Oh, you guys serve yeah, it's okay. our kind of special day. I, I may come back. <laughs> and what I say yeah. is, get yeah. it kind of how you take your duck, like I took mine medium, yeah. and lovely. But I say kind of go off how you take your duck rather than yeah. Steak or anything like that. It's closer to that. I oh. find not taste wise, but just for how it's cooked. Okay. You take your dog really rare. I'm sure goose is lovely rare. I like yeah. my medium, and I thought it was lovely medium. Oh, I, I see. Back. I just okay. Need Wonderful. Anything. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So Candy says, uh, "Butterfed goose." Yes, butterfed goose. Uh, used to be a traditional Irish thing, hard to spot because not that many people are hunting goose, I assume. Uh, and she said that a lot of people just assume it tastes like chicken. So it's not really that popular anymore. And Q accent says, I, I had no idea what she said. Okay, so I'll, I'll abbreviate. Um, she said that goose is really good. Uh, they they butter fed the goose. Uh, and the closest thing you can get to a good goose is uh, duck call, uh, cooked medium rare or rare is the closest thing you can get to a good goose. But they mentioned that they also do make goose here. It's one of their specialties. Kay says, did I go to a Turkish barber? Indeed I did, yes, I went to a Turkish barber. I did get a haircut, yeah, I went to one of the local Turkish barbers. Similar to Kilkenny, there is a barber here, like a barber every block. Some blocks have like two or three barbers. I don't know why there's so many barbers in these Irish cities. Because it, it, even in New York, there's not that many barbers. Mm. <coughs> Pat says, here looks good, thank you so much. The waitress is Irish. Lorraine, thank you so much for tuning in. Say hello to my relatives. Hey, Lorraine's relatives. Thank you so much for tuning in. My grandparents are from Ireland too. That's awesome, John. So yeah, someone asked me earlier before, do I understand the Cork accent? I have not encountered like an old school Cork accent. I just encountered people speaking very similar to how people speak in Dublin. And I didn't remember, um, maybe Irish people tend to leave their hair long and their significant other pressures them to have it so short, says Father Jothis. Uh, so many of them opened up to give them choices. <laughs> You know what, ironically enough, when I went to get a haircut earlier today, uh, there was a guy being accompanied by his girlfriend, yeah. I saw that a few times walking around. David, I'm eating pool, uh, pork, slow cooked pork with uh, amazing applesauce, some potato gratin, uh, and some roasted potatoes. 16 hour gravy. 16 hours, yeah. Excuse me for not saying. It's, no, no, no. 
<laughs> you you have to flaunt this as much as possible because it's so good. It closed on a Tuesday. You don't spend most of the day making gravy. Oh, okay. Yeah. It almost tastes as uh, it tastes as good as what I've had in America because Excellent. America, of course, is known for its pulled pork. Fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. I and think we're more beef over here, but. And the sauce. What what do you put on the sauce? The gravy, the apple sauce. Oh, it's an applesauce. It's applesauce with the, the... No, on top, the red the gravy one. gravy is the top, so it's... Um, it has a little sweetness to it. Yeah, I'm yeah. to think what's in that, because the pork one is different to the beef one. Give me two minutes, I'll just yeah. finish this table. Yeah, cool. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, take your time. Oh, yeah, it's very Janice asked Turkish barbers. So um, yeah, for some reason, a lot of Turkish immigrants have opened up barber shops here. Similar to how Chinese Americans have a bunch of laundromats or um, Hispanics, uh, South Americans like Ecuadorians and Peruvians have opened up a bunch of pizzerias or taken ownership of a lot of pizzerias in New York. For some reason, there's a lot of barbers, Turkish barbers here. And apparently they have a traditional Turkish way of barbering it kind of makes sense because in Turkey there is a really big culture of men having very well-maintained hairstyles uh, there's a few videos on it so check it out yeah it's for some reason it's, it's part of their culture under player asks, have I been to Dublin I have Nice to see you eating without the fear of copyright music. No, it's cider. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Kaiser says, ya dijiste el nombre del restaurante, yo te voy a avisar el nombre del restaurante uh, cuando termino. I'll let everyone know the name of the restaurant when I finish. Mira says, uh, can, you, uh, can we get tips about Irish cooking? <laughs> no, it's cold in the UK, says Rosalind. Oh, really, Rosalind? I baked soda bread twice, so, twice this week to keep up the flavors of this imported Irish butter that is different color, says Ida. Ida, I'm glad you're you're immersing yourself into this uh, expedition here in Ireland. Have you picked a turtleneck sweater? I have not found one yet. Stay tuned. Excuse me. How many euros does a half a liter Guinness cost? Matrix. Great question. Most stouts run between 450 to about 7 euro. It's probably pretty much the range. I think average is about 550 euro for a pint of stout. Basically a pint of any beer. It's about 550 euro. So feel free to ask me any questions. I'm going to continue eating in a little bit. Um, I'll stick around for a few minutes. Oh, someone that was saying, uh, it's so nice to see you without fear of copyright music. So I was, I started this a little bit after I intended to do so because there was a pair of women uh, sitting across from me and they were playing reggaeton <laughs> on their phone and I couldn't go live. They were playing it very loud and then they stopped, luckily, and that's when I went live. Nina says, but you make it look good. Oh, thank you so much, Nina. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Tony says, uh, ask for the price of the meal. Yeah, I'll let everyone know exactly how much I paid towards the end of the meal. Don't, do, don't you miss the free water in Italy? You know, funny, funnily enough, you go to most restaurants here, they don't serve you water immediately. You have to ask for it. And sometimes they don't even give it to you. Here, I'm sure they'll give it to me, but uh, most places I've encountered don't give water. But they don't say it's not allowed. They just, it's just not common. Uh, someone earlier asked about tipping. Tipping is not really a thing. No one really tips. Alina, great question as well. No one really tips. Irish people don't tip. Um, it's very rare unless the service is exceptional. And that's when you'll see some tipping. Uh, I have hung out with, I hung out with some uh, uh, Irish local and they tipped because we had some amazing meal and they really liked the service, but it's rare. Hey, uh, Reverend Jenny says, do you decide what you're going to eat during the day? Hmm. This restaurant, I passed by it yesterday and I immediately wanted to come here. So I decided to come here tonight. Matrix says it's an interesting law in Ireland that uh, people do not pay the water bill. Oh, interesting. So the water is covered. Sinead says, I don't know about that. I always tip uh, after a meal whenever it's a restaurant or pub. You do, Sinead. You do. Hmm, interesting. So Irish urbanists, do let me know because I've gotten um, people saying the other way. And here in Florida, people are working in restaurants. They know who the Europeans are, says Joe. I, I can imagine, yeah, I can imagine. says the Irish Times recommends 10 to 15 percent tip. Interesting okay. Helen says we usually tip with a bit of change. Interesting yeah I get different things. Leanne says no we don't tip most of the time. Yeah that's exactly what for most people I spoke with they don't say they don't tip. <coughs> Candy says I love tipping and getting tip. Well people here I assume are making a full salary. It's not like in the U.S. U.S. Wait, uh, waiters, uh, staff um, make a tipping wage. So, for example, the minimum wage in the U.S. is like average twelve dollars per hour. The tipping wage is like four dollars per hour or six dollars per hour. It is such a lower wage that you make just working. So, those tipping wages they're subsidized by people tipping hopefully they get to win minimum wage that's why waiters in the u.s are so damn stressed shanae says i don't know anyone who doesn't tip maybe it's a wicklow keep let me know uh, any other irish viewers let me know what do you think Ella says they get a full minimum wage here. Oh, nice. Servers in the U.S. are paid poorly. They are indeed. Yeah, they're paid a tipping wage, which is a quarter of the minimum wage. It's not the case in almost every other part of the world. The U.S. is very unique in that regard. And to extension Puerto Rico because it follows similar rules. If they have a service charge, I do not tip, says Ronald. Yeah, service charge. I have not seen service charges here, as far as I've been. 
Wendy says, anyway, how's your meal? It's amazing. It, this is one of the better meals I've had in, in an Irish restaurant. Yeah, definitely. And a uh, step above from the pubs. Pub food, you're not gonna get this type of gourmet quality. You're definitely not gonna get a pork slow cooked for 16 hours. Service chargers are bogus if you ask me, says Nina. Yeah, it's a complicated issue. Oh, Waitress says, my first waitressing job in the 70s, I was only paid $1.75 an hour. Oh no, oh my god. I gotta take off my jacket because it's hot. Most Japanese uh, workers are paid $10 US an hour. Oh, that's good to hear. Kori And um, John, you like pork. Awesome. I'm so glad you do. You like it combined with bacon. Oh, that's that's interesting. Hey, Eugene. Hey, how how's it going? Welcome. Gallo says never. No one. No one says top of the morning. Yes, no one says top of the morning. And. Wendy says, I like that shirt. Oh, I'm so glad. Susie says, my pink shirt diminishes the autumn vibe. It does indeed. I can't find too many autumn florals. Amalistu says, I like your sweater. Also glad you do. Did you tip the barber? I did indeed. Yeah. Ah, uh, Phil, great question. And Nina says, you look so cool tonight. Oh, thank you so much, Nina. I appreciate it. It's the scarf. The scarf makes automatically everyone look cool. It is nice. Um, tu, tu comida incluye un postre, Kaiser. Uh, buena pregunta. Yo, yo voy a estar bien lleno por un postre, pero puede ser que no termino estas papas para caber un poco de postre. So, I they do have desserts, but I am so full if I finish what I have in front of me. And I couldn't fit desserts, but maybe I can sacrifice the potatoes for some dessert. <laughs> Let me know. Hey, John Cahill says, um, just seen Mary Jane bump into Action Kid on the live stream. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, Mighty Bull, nice to see you here and welcome. Susie says, it's a beautiful shirt. I'm so glad. Zapato says, how's the beer? Murphy's here in Ireland is way better than the Murphy's in the U.S. I could say that. What? Oh, yeah. In the, in the U.S., Murphy's is really bad. Yeah. Uh, that's why. I think that's why. Yeah, because you want to have Guinness also in New York. It's like... Yeah. Nothing special. Okay. Oh, cool. I have many viewers that ask, uh, what, do you have any good tips about Irish cooking? I had more butter than you think you need. Right, touche. Yeah. Seafood. What? What would you? What, what's the best uh, way to make a good Irish seafood? Like, what's the best fish usually? Monkfish is a really good one. Monkfish. Okay, we get cool. That as a special, as my dad's favorite. Yeah. I like cake. It's a really, really white fish. And salmon. I just think salmon is a nice one. Salmon. 
Right, right. Sam, yeah. throw the guy looking butter and put it in the oven. <laughs> right, right. That would be my. <laughs> Thank you. Anomnus says uh, this brew looks delicious. It does indeed. Yeah, it's way better. If you had Murphy's in the U.S., I was skeptical when I ordered. I was like, oh, that was the only draft beer that they had. I was like, oh no, Murphy's. But no, it was really good. Hey, Zio from Puerto Rico says you speak Spanish pretty good. Sí, yo hablo español muy bien porque porque yo soy un nativo de Puerto Rico. <laughs> Yeah, I speak Spanish well because I, I'm a Puerto Rican native. Okay, I'm going to have a few more bites. Well, let me know. I'm definitely going to have this carrot. Mmm. Drafts are especially popular in Greece. How do, how's the taste? Stouts here are so creamy. Uh, stout is a dark beer. Irish people might get offended because they, they don't call it a beer, even though this is a type of beer. It's a very dark beer and it's creamy. It has co uh, coffee and chocolatey notes to it. Yeah, coffee and chocolatey notes to it. Okay, so everyone, let me know. Do you want me to feature a dessert? This has been a great restaurant experience. Um, I've really been enjoying it. I already really recommend this place. I'll let you know exactly where it's at uh, at the end of this video. I have, yeah, I have a little bit of room for dessert. Luckily I can take dessert to go if it's not an ice cream. Excuse me. I didn't have room for those potatoes. It was a lot of food. Mm. Leanne says, what's the choice? We'll see what the choice is. I'm gonna have this carrot though. Oh my God. This carrot is almost as tender as the pulled pork is tender. You clean your plate. I don't think I'll be able to clean the plate. No. But it is worthy of being cleaned. Um, Rulal says, no, we want you to be the king of England. <laughs> that's that's a different country, Rulal. <laughs> no dessert for you, says Joe. No, Joe. All right, I'm gonna ask for dessert. Excuse me. Let me see the dessert menu, please. Okay. Yeah, thank you. What do you recommend? Do you eat raisins? I do like raisins, yeah. I like the apple sponge. Okay, I'll okay. try the apple sponge. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do you take, um, what do you think you call it? Yeah, I'll try the caramel glaze. Thank you. Apple sponge, excuse me. Apple sponge with some caramel and some raisins. It's all out, ladies and gentlemen. Susie, apple sponge cake. Paul says, don't order a particular drink. You know, I have been tempted to try the drink that would have a name that's accepted in America, but not so accepted here. But I heard that people do order it. They just call it half Guinness, half uh, ale. Or half stout, half ale. It could be any half ale, half stout. So it could be half Murphy's, half uh, uh, rock, rock Shore. It could be that. Well, Rock Shore is a lacquer, but it could be like a Smithix. <laughs> Kat says it sounds good by this, the raisins. I think the raisins add a little bit extra flair to it. It makes it special.
Ruby says, oh God, don't ask for that drink. Why not, Ruby? Zapato says, what do you ask for? You ask for half ale, half stout. I'm not sure if that's a common drink, but a few people have recommended it to me. Irish people. Does dark ale make you feel hungry, says Catherine. Not really. Dark, uh, this is not dark ale, this is stout. Stouts tend to be very filling, even though they're low in calories. A lot of people used to say that this was a um, meal. This was a drinkable meal. That's how Guinness used to advertise their stouts. Are you buzz, says uh, Sabato. So remember when you they serve mostly in uh, pints. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Oh no. Do you want any of this to take away? Yes, I'll take this away. Okay. Yeah. Do you want the food? Uh, no, I'm done with that. Yeah. Okay. Even though it was so delicious, but I really want to feature dessert, Perfect. so I have to have to make a sacrifice. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> anyway. And do you want them all in the same two box, or will I yeah. just do the same? Dinner? Same two go box. Yeah. Zapato says uh, she's a sweet. She offered it on the house, which uh, she doesn't have to do. Uh, so, <laughs> a big tip is in favor. Um, but let me show you this. And I'm happy to do, if anyone wants to, I'm happy to um, match tips. Um, if anyone wants to leave a super chat, I'll match that uh, minus. Um, 40%. So I'll match like 70% of what you leave. 60% of what you leave. I'll match it. So feel free to super chat. I'll match it. Look at this. Oh my god. Wow. Super. Oh, it's warm. And it came with some ice cream. Shanae says, tell her, okay, we'll do. <laughs> tell her that she's a busy waitress. Oh, oh, we'll do, Shanae. Is this a butter sauce? I don't know. It's a caramel glaze. It's caramel, but there is butter involved in here. This cake was made with some butter. Mmm. Come on. Thank you so yeah, much. All my commenters are saying that you're an amazing waitress. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Gallo says, as, as, as you said, she's not the, just the waitress. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware. Um, she is. Uh, I think she is involved with the family that runs it. Offer a bite, says Camilla. And we'll do. Okay, so here it is. Zapato says, check PayPal. Oh, thank you so much. Laureen left $5. Okay, so I'll leave um, $3 and anyone else leave anything else? Three euro. Carol left something. Carol, let me know since you left the PayPal, I'll match it completely. Um, oh, Carol left the. Wow, Carol left the PayPal for the entire meal. Um, everyone, give a huge round of hearts to Carol. Thank you so much, Carol, for the very generous. Carol has been super generous in giving um, super chats. Huge, generous supporter on the ranks of Lorreen, uh, Kay. We have a few others that are super generous supporters. Uh, so thank you so much, Carol. Everyone, give a huge round of hearts to Carol uh, for giving some some PayPal. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much, but thank you so much for the PayPal. Uh, hearts anyway, because you give big PayPal's before. So thank you so much, Carol. I'm so glad you're commenting. Oh my God, uh, Ruby gave a 20 euro super chat. Okay, so I'm gonna give um, as a 15-ish, 15 euro nine. Nine dollars, so I'm gonna give uh, um, six dollars from that. That's 
just wait until drunken guys. <laughs> um, all right. So six plus fifteen plus three. Wow. Okay. Six plus fifteen plus three is uh, twenty-four. Thank you so much. Twenty-four euro tip, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, so this cake is amazing. Super soft, super, super moist. Very warm, which I like. The caramel glaze, ooh, it's not super sugary, but there is butter involved. I think there's butter involved because it tastes buttery. Uh, not too many raisins, which is nice. So you can avoid the raisins. If you're not a fan of raisins, you can easily avoid them. Swiss are left five, so I'll add another three. 27 euro. Um, tip Paul left 830 stars which is about eight dollars so I'll leave about um, 450 of that thank you so much so that is 27 plus 4 31 euro all right I'm leaving a 31 euro tip <laughs> save the super chat for Ariel's doctor visit later <laughs> I got cash, which is nice. I took out cash earlier today, which is nice. I think I get changed though. 10, 10, six, 31 plus six, 37, 37 euro tip. Wow, it's gonna be a big tip, ladies and gentlemen. Big, big tip. <laughs> That's a big, big tip. 37 euro. I. I can match up to 50. I can match up to 50. If you guys are really wanting to live a gigantic tip, <laughs> I will leave this entire bill. What's the service charge to take money out? Says Lorraine. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't have the bill yet. Um, uh, this will probably come out to like 55 euro the entire meal, maybe a little bit more, 60 euro. It's it, uh, it's a good restaurant, but uh, of course we have good food and very expensive food. So, yeah. you'll be heading to the ATM to get more cash. Camilla says that's too much. Well, she got lucky. <laughs> Save some money for yourself, uh, Joe. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone. Um, all right, your man left another six dollars. I'm going to um, stop it there. So, thank you so much. That is a forty euro tip or so. Lisa, thank you so much. So Lisa, Swisser, Christine, Shanae said 500 stars. Thank you so much. Zapato says $16 plus tip. Yeah. I mean, I'm covering the meal, of course, because uh, many of you are already supporters. And Christine sent us $10 super chat. Oh, Christine, thank you so much. Give some to charity, says Gary. <laughs> This is an excellent, excellent dessert. I highly recommend it. It's so, I like, I finished this without even thinking about it. Save some for the Xantax later, says uh, Lisa. <laughs> your man, thank you so much. I love your, your name, your man of the telly. Ireland is expensive. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Phil says she's worth it. Indeed, you know, um... I've seen other people do that on live video, so why, why, why not, ladies and gentlemen? It was, this was great service. Why not uh, use the kindness of other people to just give a huge tip? That's for fun. I think people get too caught up with the money thing. They're like, oh no, don't give too much. But if you have the means, people here are watching with some means, uh, all collectively, why not? Why not do it for fun? Great. 
All right, one more bite. Lori Epson, thank you so much for the extra five. Appreciate that. All right, the bill is being left entirely. Thank you so much. Mm. All right, I'll tell you the price so you know. Uh, River Dance, Washington Street. Yeah, that's they have the bands every day. You know, I don't know what's the forward situation. Where's the secret garden? You know, and Zapata says I want to see your reaction. I'll do my best. You'll hear. You know, the secret garden. You know, it's like it's like this one. You know, yeah, it's like Alice in Wonderland. Some kind of thing. You know, with the music and everything. One of the better sponge cakes I've had. Truly. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. bill, please. Thank you. Pay via card. Susie says, Am I ready to snooze? I am indeed ready to snooze. Uh, I am really ready to snooze. Well, after I edit like a TikTok or two <laughs> and do some more editing. <laughs> I really love what I do, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, my idea of relaxing is going back to my hotel room and making more videos for all of you. So um, thank you for being such a great audience that makes it a pleasure uh, to post these videos too afterwards. Catherine says food coma time, it is. Yeah. Right. Uh, card. Box for yourself. Wonderful. Is it all okay? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. One of the best meals I've had here in Ireland. Excellent. Yeah. If you're here for the rituals the next two weeks, but if you're around, the goose is gorgeous. Oh, okay. Or if you're into fish, fish special changes nearly every day, and it's lovely. Okay. My family are chefs, and they all send me down to the fish. Is, does your family own the restaurant? No, they no? actually, the chef and his wife, who yeah. owns it, used to work for my granny down in Kerry. Yeah. She did not But they all kind of worked, well. yeah. worked together. Yeah. And then when I moved up here, mm -hmm. When I moved up here, they kinda, I'm normally in TV production, but there's nothing going on. You're normally work. in TV production? Yeah, I do kids TV oh. production when there's any work going on. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Well, I, I make I make live videos of travel, and then oh, that's okay, hence what I'm doing. No, I'm so sorry, this machine no. is just really No worries, stupid, take your time. So it did not go through. You can see there it's Okay, all right. It's, it's just temperamental, cool. to be honest. No worries. And now, and you can pop that in. I think it's the swipey one that's like... Is there food involved in the um, in the kids show? Um, so I used to make the, the cake and stuff like oh, that. Oh, cool! <laughs> they be doing on the show. That's really fun. But haven't done it in ages now. I used to love it. Hopefully, we'll be back to it soon. But I don't want to be sick. Like, haven't done it in ten years. So yeah. Thank you. I always feel I'm very rusty. And um, many of my followers love the food experience, so they asked me to give you Are a you gigantic. Serious? Yes, oh, I yeah. am hundred percent serious. Thank you very, very they much. said that you're one of the better servers that I've had in this uh, entire oh, experience. Thank you very, very and much. And the food was a, truly amazing. Excellent. Yeah. Elbows for the yes. COVID. Thank you very much, <laughs> Thank you Normally so much. I talk. Thank you very, much. <laughs> have very a great night. Bye-bye. Really Thank you. <laughs> All right. So the total, it was it was not that expensive because they did cover the, the, the dessert. Uh, so big hearts to them for covering the dessert. It was so nice of them. Uh, so I end up coming out to, let me see which one is the atomized, here it is, the atomized, um, I thought it was going to be more expensive, but wow, this is cheap for, for Ireland. Wow, this is actually a very good price. If this was in Dublin, this might have been double. So the dessert was on them. Did they cover anything else? They also covered the beer. No, they also covered... They covered the beer. Yeah, they covered the beer. That was so kind of nice of them. $28.90. That's super cheap. Did I miss any super chats? If I did, uh, do let me know uh, as I was chatting with the server. That was amazing. That was an ex excellent meal, super inexpensive. Let me show you the front of the, of the uh, experience. Susie says, have I made a profit? So full disclosure, Yes, um, what I do, these videos are for entertainment purposes. I am an entertainer, this is my job. 
um, just like a server serves, or uh, as she mentioned, she's in TV production. So this is my job. So yes, indeed, I hope to have made a profit. I think I did make a profit <laughs> from from these uh, hour and a half of entertainment. Uh, and thank you so much. I've gotten a few comments from people who disapprove of this. Um, and those comments uh, are people who do enjoy the show, but they disapprove of having a lavish meal on live video and thinking a lot of people are, are paying for me to eat. But I am an entertainer. This is my job. Uh, and none of this is free. Uh, I could cover all this of the kindness of my heart. And I do love making videos out of the kindness of my heart. But everyone should be paid and um, compensated for their work. No matter what they do. They could be an entertainer like myself, a live streamer, actor, a, um, a TV show host, or it could be a waiter, it could be a, a, um, a gardener, a plumber, whatever, teacher. So let me know, should I continue making these videos? Do let me know, uh, and I will. Uh, if you want me to. Let me show you from the outside. Be right back. Uh, no, no, not oh, fully finished. Perfect. I'm going to show the front. Yeah. Excellent. I, I leave you in peace and just, yes. oh, there's my pen. I'm looking for that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let me just show you the front. Carol says, you work really hard and deserve it. I don't see the problem. Please continue. Dean says, don't worry, Ariel, personally, okay. Uh, they don't have the name in front. Okay, here they have. Shrog. Strasbourg Goose. And this was the menu, so you get to see it. So you get to see I was not spending uh, that. It is actually very good prices. And there we go, the dessert. Susie says, you couldn't pay me to eat on camera. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. I'm going to head back and have a very good night's sleep while well, editing and then some sleep. Uh, stay tuned for a video about Mizzen Head, the southwesterly edge of Ireland. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome. Check out Strasbourg Goose in Cork, right in the city center. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Slangafol, everyone. Slangafol.